Hey everyone, my name is Josh, and today I am here to talk to you a bit about calling within Microsoft Teams. If you attended Ignite or know anybody that did attend Ignite or Microsoft UC is the product area that you work in, then I'm sure you have heard that what was formerly Cloud PBX, now Phone System, is coming to Microsoft Teams. Uh, that is actually a reality now. As of a couple of days ago, calling was introduced for the general public into Microsoft Teams. Now, there are some caveats to that as far as availability, who can experience this, uh, what features, what capabilities are present. And it's going to be very important that you understand all the ins and outs before you go switching over all your users to receiving calls in Microsoft Teams. This is a very exciting development, and it's a really good thing for us to be getting involved with and starting to test out and, and POC for internal uh, departments that are going to be using this feature down the line. But we need to approach this with a little bit of education first. So let's jump over to the quick start guide that Microsoft has provided to go over some of those ins and outs and what we can expect with calling as of right now in Microsoft Teams. All right, switching over to this screen, like I said, this quick start guide all about configuring calling plans in Microsoft Teams. We um, There are several bits of information in here. I don't wanna go over it in too much detail, but we get, a, of course, a very attractive screenshot of what calling looks like in Microsoft Teams with a fully populated speed dial and suggested contacts and all that good stuff. Let's jump straight down to prerequisites for enabling the calls tab in Teams. How do we get that new calls tab to show up in our Microsoft Teams client? Very simply, in order for this to be in place, you need to have phone system and calling plans licensing assigned to yourself. Then of course, a phone number assigned to yourself as well once you have calling plans assigned. These two licenses need to be assigned to the user that is using Teams and expects to see that calls tab. Beyond that, this also needs to be an environment where hybrid is not configured for the calling for that user. That user needs to be purely Skype for Business Online, not a hybrid voice situation. On top of that, clearly calling plans are only available in a good handful of countries, which means only users who have licensing based in those few countries are going to be able to take advantage of this new capability within Microsoft Teams. So if you happen to be a user who is enabled for phone system and calling plans because you are in a country that has those capabilities um, and you are already successfully using that in Skype for Business Online and you are not obtaining a number, you are not doing a hybrid voice setup, as in you have a SIP trunk on-prem and your voice is coming back through there, which you wouldn't need calling plans if that were the case. If you are not any, if you are not in that situation and you have those prerequisites met, you should already be able to go into Microsoft Teams and see that calls tab. Assuming you can do that, let's talk about some of the important things to note. Okay. Um, first, like I said, hybrid voice not supported. The other area that is not supported when you're using Teams for your calling is federated calling. Federated calls will still get routed to Skype for Business only, not Microsoft Teams. Very important thing to uh, pay attention to there. So how do we manage this behavior as far as switching it over? Because that really cool GUI that they showed us for managing Teams calling at Ignite, that's not ready yet. It hasn't been deployed. It's not available. The, the Skype and Teams admin center, it's not there yet. So we manage this capability with the Teams interop policy PowerShell commandlets, okay? Um, let's cover one thing really quick. There is a default global Teams interop policy. By default, that policy is assigned to all users in your tenant that have phone system and uh, calling plans assigned. So without you doing anything, this is turned on and all users have that global policy. In that event, all users will get that calls tab when they meet these three requirements. That means they are able to, with this calls tab, place outbound calls, outbound only. At this stage, inbound calls are still going only to Skype for Business Online to your Skype for Business client. They are not coming into the Teams client. So by default, if you have these licenses, as of right now, you should get the calls tab in your Microsoft Teams client 
you should be able to place an outbound PSTN call, but your will you will still be receiving calls within Skype for Business. Make sense? Good. Here's what this global plan looks like. There are a global policy. There are not a lot of attributes here to be set. Uh, the Microsoft strongly advises that you do not change any of these. If we go down a little bit, and we it tells us what the experience is going to be like for existing Skype for Business customers and customers without Skype for Business. Um, very important details to know there. Um, how do we configure people to use the default policy? Well, you wouldn't need to do anything unless you have changed them from using the default policy. If you need to change them back, this is how you would do that. Grant-CS Teams interop policy with the following information. Now, let's talk about configuring teams to receive inbound PSTN calls. Again, some important things to call out. We recommend that you apply this configuration to an initial set of users before applying it to a wider organization level, because there are going to be some undesired consequences of doing so for a number of reasons. Um, here is what this policy would look like. They're recommending you use maybe this disallow override calling teams, chat teams, very user friendly name, right? What it does is it changes the default, the calling default client and the chat default client to both use teams. Okay, cool. What does this do for existing Skype for Business customers? Well, what it does is it redirects those incoming calls to Teams. This includes both VoIP and PSDN calls. Your federated calls, even with this policy, will still go to Skype for Business. So even if you change users over to receiving calls with Teams, as of right now, they'll still need to have Skype for Business open and signed into if they expect to receive federated calls. Very important bit of information. For customers without Skype for Business, uh, PSDN calls are gonna be received in Teams. Federated calling is just plain old not supported in Teams, so they won't be able to get federated calls. There you have it. Now, very big important piece here. Currently, changing this calling default client parameter to Teams will also affect calls to Skype for Business IP phones. Incoming calls will not be received on the phones and will only ring in the Teams client. This is a very important thing to know if IP phones are a big part of your UC strategy currently, okay? Keep that in mind before you flip that switch for particular users. How do we configure users to do that? We go back to this grant-cs teams interop policy. We specify this name in there instead, and then we put the identity, identity of the user, okay? We can also take this allow end users client override attribute and set that to true in a custom policy. What this does is it puts the settings in the users end users hands for changing all this on their own. If they go to the settings within Microsoft Teams, they will now have this call section that shows up and it allows them to change on their own the preferred calling application here. That's pretty cool. Uh, how do we create a custom policy? right down here, new-cs teams interop policy. And then of course you must grant it after you do this. So those are the ins and outs to setting up uh, a users and uh, for certain capabilities and what they get by default right now. Let's jump over to the actual Teams client. Here we are, look at this. My minion user has calls, has a new calling tab in the Microsoft Teams client. This minion user is a brand new test user, so nothing has been set up yet. I don't have a ton of contacts in there. I don't have voicemail and all that stuff happening yet. I just have a pretty blank looking area here, but I have my dial pad and I've got the ability to look at my call history and my voicemail. Now, what we should be able to do at this stage because I've changed nothing and all my settings are default for the minion user is I should be able to place an outbound call. I'm going to do that. I'm gonna call my cell phone here Okay, we're gonna call it. And now we should see that ring on my phone here. And there we go, call coming in. I answer it, we have audio, perfect. Um, now in my history, that call shows up. As we can see, I've done a number of other tests prior to this. However, if we go back over 
to the dial pad and I attempt to call that phone number back. Okay. I'm signed in with Skype for business as well, just so we see that. I'm going to attempt to call that phone number back and we will see that it will not ring within Teams. It will only ring into Skype for business. We are calling now. And there we go. Skype for business is receiving this call. I'm going to go ahead and hang that up. We do not want to answer this in Skype for business. We want to answer this in Teams. So if we want to change this user, we're now going to pull up PowerShell. Okay. As you can see here, we have, I've already gone through and set up a, a uh, remote PowerShell session. I ran the get CS teams interrupt policy to see all the policies here. I even created a custom one earlier. Um, I before had granted this disallow to minion uh, for the purposes of this demo, I switched minion back to my custom interrupt policy, which sets him back to defaults. So let's go and grant him this new, uh, this disallow override calling teams chat teams policy. Now, for the sake of being thorough, I'm going to log out of the client and log back in. You may need to do this as well after you change it. The settings do take a moment to take effect here. So we'll go ahead and sign out as Minion. I'm going to do that on the Skype for Business client as well. And we're going to sign out, sign back in. We'll sign back in as Minion on our Teams client. Okay. So we're signing back in. Perfect. So with this new policy that I have set up for myself, I should now be receiving calls, inbound PSDN calls on my Teams client. All right. Now that we have gone and given uh, a little time for the changes to take effect on the back end, I am going to go ahead and place a call back to that number again. And we should be receiving the call within Teams now. And here we go. Incoming call for Teams. PSTN call. We will answer this. Perfect. Perfect. Look, at that. Look at that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mute the phone there. One thing I wanted to show you, we uh, the call control capabilities, we can mute here. We have hold, transfer, and keypad capabilities in here. We also have the ability to take this call to... Um, full screen or change the devices being used for the call. Okay, let's go ahead and end this call now. This ends, goes back into our uh, history here. Now let's do one more thing. Let's call back, okay? We're gonna call, it's gonna ring in Teams again, and I'm going to decline the call, okay? Now it's prompting me to leave a, a message. This is a voicemail for Minion during a live demo of Microsoft Teams calling awesomeness. I have hung up. That has created a voicemail. We should be getting voicemail in here pretty soon. Uh, the cool thing about the voicemail popping in here is that we will, oh, already we've got a voicemail. Duration 12 seconds, date, very cool. Great to see this in here already. Um, we can have the option of deleting it, calling it back. We can add this to our speed dial or add it to our contacts. And if I click on the voicemail itself, it says that we have received a voicemail from this number. Thank you for using transcription. If you don't see a transcription above, it's because the audio quality was not clear enough to transcribe. Uh, so we, we have the option there of setting up voicemail, giving feedback. If we go ahead and play this back. This is a voicemail for Minion during a live demo of Microsoft Teams calling awesomeness. Perfect. That has come through. Voicemail seems to be working. Our call history is clearly working. Our contacts, even though we haven't imported any contacts, we're getting suggestions for based on our history. And we can see how calls are not received until we flip that interrupt policy switch. Calls can be placed outbound, but not received until that point. Um, and that are pretty much the ins and outs of what you need to know when getting started with calling in Microsoft Teams as of right now. Um, let me flip back over to my main screen. 
starting in the first and second quarter of 2018, Microsoft will be releasing a number of other changes to complement these features. Uh, there's a lot more coming in terms of bringing phone system fully into Teams and making the solution be able to stand alone in Teams uh, as much as it does within Skype for Business Online. Next year, a lot will change in the space. So stay tuned, keep watching for that, okay? I hope you found this uh, tutorial helpful. I hope the caveats that I mentioned will save some of you some grief and headaches as you're getting started. And we will see you back here for future tutorials as more and more features are released from phone system into Microsoft Teams. Thank you.